Welcome to Healing Your Relationship Summit. This is the place where we find your happily ever after, no matter what that looks like. You know, in my career, what I've found is not all relationships are equal. And so therefore, not all answers are equal either. And that's the reason that I gathered all these experts together to give you a new idea, a new concept of how things work. And today, I'm really excited to have a couple, Kim and Bob Morris, who are experts in helping both couples and singles. You know, I started looking at what uh, they, their uh, uh, expertise was on, and it, was, it just surprised me. They're, they have all kinds of things in their in the briefcase. So I'm not going to bore you with all that here. You're going to get that in the writing. So good morning, Kim and Bob. How are you guys? Hi, how are you? You know, right here. I, you know, you guys so much intrigued me. I am so interested in hearing about you guys. You know, I know you got, you got, you got married in uh, 2010 right. and happily ever after ever since, but you say there's more. So first of all, before I ask about the more, tell me about um, your history a little bit. Okay, well, I'll go, I guess I'll go first. Um, I was married once before, um, and that marriage lasted 12 years. Uh, I have two children from that marriage, but then I was single for 12 years. And that whole entire time that I was single, I was trying to find the love of my life. I knew he was out there and um, I just was not having any success at all. I just kept meeting the same kind of guys over and over again. And um, it seemed to always be the kind of guys that just didn't want to commit to a relationship. In fact, I dated one guy for like six years who just he refused to commit to the relationship. So I started working with a relationship coach myself. And within just probably six months of working with that, with that coach, I found Bob. And one of my big criteria at the time was um, I loved sailing and I really wanted to find a sailor. And uh, when I saw Bob's profile online. We met on Plenty of Fish. Mm -hmm. um, it basically said, you, you must want to live on a boat or don't even bother replying. And um, oh. my response was, yeah. yeah right <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Go team. Go team. You know, send me a picture of the boat. So, <laughs> so uh, that, was, that was the beginning of our happily ever after. Um, we really, we, we were married after dating for six months and we moved on to the boat and we lived on the boat for about five, six years, six years, something like that. Uh, wow. Something like that. And unfortunately our, our, our boat had an incident and we're no longer living on the boat, but we are hoping to get back there really, really soon. And we, we have a great following of sailing couples and that kind of lifestyle. And we um, also ha have sailing retreats planned out for couples who want to go out on a sailboat and work on their marriage at the same time. And that's my history and a little bit about us. So okay. go ahead. Nice. Well, I've been married twice. And well, as they say, third time's a charm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I know, there's really not much more I can add. Just you know, Kim and I have been working on this together. Kim got started in the coaching first, and I had had a sailing school for a number of years, and I decided that it was about 15 years. I decided it was time to go in a new direction, and so I thought about uh, getting in on board with coaching training with Kim. Ah. So here I am. Sweet. And I know that there's been couples out there that are thanking you guys to be together, so. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, doing things, being a couple helps, helps give a better understanding, but also uh, we also do coaching as a couple. So we can be a couple coaching couples and some people prefer that way as opposed to just one or the other of us. Right. Well, that's one of the reasons I was intrigued of inviting you guys to come on to this summit 
is because you're a couple. And, and uh, to me, that's so much stronger. Thank you. Thank you. And, and so, you know, the title of our, our interview today is It's Not About Me, It's All About Me. That's right. That really confused me at first. So <laughs> tell me about that. I know. It really does sound like a contradiction, doesn't it? But yeah. It, it's really not a contradiction. Um, it's talking about some of the attitudes that we have in, in speaking about communication. And it's really two sides of the coin, which is why when we get into it, it won't be so confusing. But um, one of the big misconceptions about communication, I mean, everybody thinks that communication is, you know, the most important thing in a relationship. You ask anybody, you know, what do you think is the, the greatest skill in a, communi- in a marriage? And people will tell you communication. But a lot of times I think that they, they feel that that means that it's, how eloquent we are at speaking or how well we are at expressing our feelings. But what we have found is that it's not so much about that. That's not really the important thing. It's more about the attitudes and the understandings that we have about our partner that makes that communication work. And so that's why we start off with the um, it's all about me. <clears throat> so, which is a lo- uh, really contradictive to what a lot of people think. Well, I've said that to many people before that, you know, you start off conversation with it's all about you. And they're like, well, wait a minute. I thought, you know, how can it be? If I'm all about me, isn't that selfish? But mm-hmm. it, it's really not because what we really want to remember is that when we say it's all about us, what that means is it's all about our need. When we have a problem or an issue, we want to really concentrate on how it's about our need. And when we do that, we take out the judgment and the interpretation that goes along with that. Okay. And we wanted, before we really get into all of the different paradigms and the different things, we wanted to do a little bit of role play. Oh, sweet. So that we could show you what a conversation looks like when people are not aware of all of these different attitudes. Okay. Okay. Now, those attitudes are uh, the things that really cloud uh, our communication and derail it and take it off in a direction we don't really want it to go. And it's, it's unintentional, but these are what we call the four roadblocks and they're judgment, interpretation, defensiveness, and reactive emotion. Right. And defensiveness is quite possibly the worst one. And you'll see that in our role play so, as yeah. we go about doing this. Look for all four of those in the role play. So okay. Again, Judgment, defensiveness, interpretation, and reactive emotion. Okay. Okay. So Bob's going to start off. Okay. We're picture us as a younger couple. (laughs) I can do that. (laughs) Much younger, (laughs) please. Bob, get your hair out of your face. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Okay. Um, honey, I was just looking at the, all that stuff you booked for the Disney vacation. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, what are you doing to me? You have been spending so much money lately, like that $300 pair of shoes. I mean, come on. This trip is going to cost us a fortune. We can't afford it this year. I'm, I'm just going to have to cancel it. Cancel it? Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's our family vacation. Sorry. I spend money? What about all the money you just spent on that brand new car? You know what? Your problem is you're just cheap. That's mm-hmm. all there is to it. You think I'm cheap? Yeah. <laughs> right. I can't even work enough hours to buy you everything you want. And frankly, it was very irresponsible of you to book that trip in the first place. <laughs> okay. Now, while this may be a little humorous to some of those watching, arguments like this happen to couples everywhere every day and believe it or not just some minor tweaks in the attitude and the presentation will make this pretty much a non-event 
Wow. So, you know, what I noticed on that, I just want to kind of let the people at home know that it started escalating. It got worse and worse and worse as you went on. It's like, you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> so now, tell us how to change that. <laughs> and that's, and that's the, where the defensiveness comes in because once, once you start off with blaming and then it becomes defensive and then it just escalates from there and all bets are off. Right. So that's where it starts off with really, even in, in the way that he approached the situation. Right. If he had used the, the attitude of it's all about me, it, it would have had even a different outcome right from the beginning. So I started to talk about it's all about me, but you go ahead and finish that. Well, it, on the surface, all about me sounds like a selfish attitude, but let me put it into context. When there's a conflict, anytime there's a conflict, there's an unmet need that's surfacing. And for a person to be able to correctly get across what their need is, they need to be able to see how it's all about them, expressing their need, okay? Now that's not blaming, it's not accusing, it's just saying this is what my need is, okay? The other thing that is important is that then you have to realize that their need isn't necessarily what their partner's need is, or uh, that need doesn't need to be met in the same way. Right. Everybody, a lot of people believe that, you know, when they have an issue with something that everybody would have that same issue with it. Right. You know, that all needs are universal. But we know, really, when we think about it, that that's not true. You know, we're all really different, and we all have different needs, and we don't look at things the same way. Exactly. And in, in fact, in the role play, the husband had a need to keep the fi family finances in order. Now, obviously, his wife did not have the same need, or it didn't need to be met the same way as his. Right. So this doesn't make her a bad person. It just means that his needs are different or need to be met in a different way. Got it. The approach that was making her a bad person. Right. So if, if he was truly making it all about his needs and truly making it all about him, he wouldn't have been putting that you're a bad person out there in the first place. Got it. Right? Yeah. He wouldn't have started off with, what are you doing to me? You spent a fortune. You did this. You did that. Mm. That set up the blaming and the judgment. And of course, after that comes offensiveness. Right. Which is just a natural progression, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, said it. Well, um, he could have said, um, you know, it's, I'm worried, uh, you know, using I words and mm -hmm. I phrases, I need to talk to you about the finances because I'm getting worried. It's been difficult for me to balance the budget the last few months and I'm really stressed about it. Uh, maybe I need your help in figuring out how to make this vacation work. Okay, make mm -hmm. your budget. And there are a lot of ways that he could express his need without blaming or judging and making her wrong right. part of interpretation right. does that make sense yeah it makes total sense okay. I just feel that lightness that time you know, <laughs> just the, how you said that was like wow totally opposite right yeah. right but he's saying the same thing yeah he's he's communicating the same need he's just expressing it with different words and coming about it from the standpoint of what he needs instead of making her wrong and that's what's crucial right so it's not exactly the words that he used but the attitude that he had behind right. it mm -hmm. and so then we get to the what seems like a contradiction which is it's not about me and why this isn't a contradiction is because now we're talking about the person that's receiving the information from the person that has the need right. so in this situation Bob was the one that had, he had a need to talk to his wife about the finances. He had a need to get these finances in order. That was his need. So being the person that's listening to this or what we often call the receiver, I then have to realize that it's not about me. 
right. at all. Yeah. Okay. So when we put ourselves into that frame of mind, that immediately frees us up to be able to hear our partner. Mm -hmm. We then can say, okay, well, he even may be saying things like, what'd you do to me? And you, you know, you're spending too much money. But if I sit back and I say, you know what, this is not about me. This is about my partner and they're coming to me with something that they're upset about and they're coming to me with a need. Right. This is about them. Exactly. So how do I need to hear him so that I'm not going into defensiveness? Because <clears throat> with the words that he's coming at me with, right? I, most people would immediately go into defensiveness. But really, if we stop and we just stop for a second and think, oh, wow, this is not about me. He's coming to me with his need then a lot of times the defensiveness goes away. And even though he did what we call a harsh startup instead of a soft startup, mm -hmm. um, it was a little harsh. Yeah, <laughs> very. It really escalated though when she got defensive. And there's a lady that I admire a great deal and I follow a lot of her work. And she, her name is uh, Byron Katie. I don't know if you've ever heard yeah. of her. I've heard of Byron, yeah. Yeah, we went and saw her once, she's, she's wonderful. Yep. But she has this saying and she says, defensiveness is the first act of war. Uh. Right, and when you really think about it, it's so true. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he was, he was upset, he was in, in this role play, he, he was experiencing pain. Right. It really didn't escalate and get bad until I responded with, defensiveness yep and that's when it really became war right yeah yeah it felt like a war yeah <laughs> right. no there's no question that you know he could have stated his need better you know the soft startup like kim said as opposed to the harsh startup but uh it didn't become a conflict until the defensiveness showed up right right so like you said many times a partner will make a statement like you spend too much mm -hmm. and when we're in defensive mode and we have that attitude of defensiveness what's usually the first thing that we say that's uh, yeah yeah Dif you you did this or yeah, you know, yeah. you know accusation i don't spend too much what are you talking about I yeah don't spend too much you know that's usually the first thing that happens when we're feeling defensive right but how much better it is to actually listen to that statement you know, you spend too much, take a second, if, if you have the frame of mind to do that, which we encourage couples to do, and think, okay, is there any part of that that's true? And when we think that, we completely take ourselves out of that defensive mode and we really almost diffuse the argument. So in this case, in this role play example, um, the husband states, you know, you've been spending too much lately. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What did she just do? She just bought a $300 pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. right? For a lot of people, that's perfectly normal, but not for me, but for a lot of people. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so she might be thinking, hmm, you know, I did just spend $300 on that pair of shoes this month. How could I look at my spending? Wow, I hear he's really stressed out about this trip. You know, how, what could I do to help him afford this trip? So instead of defensiveness being the first reaction, mm -hmm. nothing but war. Right. Right. We want to, we want to, you know, really figure out about what our partner's saying that's true, what their need is, how it's not all about me. Mm -hmm. I really truly believe that being on the receiving end of a conflict is usually where most of the problems in communication really start. Okay. Because the person coming to you really has a, you, a legitimate need because right. all needs are valid. That's another thing that we stress really highly. All needs are valid. So how you react to that need is really where a lot of that conflict can start. And I cannot tell you how many times I have someone that comes to me and says, I just can't talk to my partner. Mm -hmm. 
And why, why can't you talk to your partner? And because every time I try and talk to them, they come back with, yeah, but you. Mm -hmm. And they completely turn it around. Yep. So yep. how much better it works when you know that you can go to your partner, you know that you can approach them and they're not gonna come back at you with defensiveness and judgment and pointing the finger right back at you. Yeah. Right? Yes. So this brings me to what I call my three favorite words in communication. Okay, let's hear them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. Ah. So when our partner comes to us with an issue, and even if it sounds like whining or complaining or finger pointing, I guess, or judgment, or judgment, right? And we are in that mode of all needs are valid. Mm -hmm. Another really important thing to remember, then the best way to get this across to your partner is with those three little magic words. Tell, Tell me, me more. more. Mm -hmm. And what was really magical about this is that it really puts us into an attitude of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And when we're in a mode of curiosity, how much better are we going to listen to what our partner is saying? Right. Yeah. 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 You just think about that. When you talk to a stranger and you're curious about them, you just keep asking questions. Right. Yep. Yep. And so that's what the tell me more does. It, it's, I hear you're upset. Yeah. Tell me more about this. And, the, you know, this is really great for the guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> because. Yeah. Tell how, me more. <laughs> how many times um, does your woman come to you with a complaint and you just do not know what to say? Mm -hmm. and, and that's really? a complaint with men is, you know, they don't know what to say when their wife is upset about something. Well, the only thing you need to say are three magic words. Tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah, because uh, quite frankly, she doesn't want you to fix anything. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want you to talk. She doesn't really isn't interested in any, anything you have to say unless it's tell me more. Because as long as she can continue to uh, express her feelings, she will eventually, by doing that, get to what her need really is because she probably doesn't even know at first what her need really is. Yeah, women for the most part, and I, you know, I don't want to generalize everybody, but women for the most part don't always know what they need or what they're upset about until they've talked it through. And what, what men tend to do in that very first sentence is fix it or comment, and they're not, they're not even ready for that, right? They're, they're not even there. So I'm, I'm giving you men out there the, just, just the three magic words that are just going to make her feel like she's being listened to. She's going to feel validated. She's going to figure out what she needs. And you know, that's what girlfriends do when we talk to each other. Oh, oh wow. Tell me more. They <laughs> <laughs> do, right? Yeah. Right. Which incidentally is why women usually talk to their girlfriends and not us. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I can understand that one. And you know what, what women hate the most is to be talking to a man and for him to just sit there and look at her. Yeah. Um, I know we're running, we're running on time here a little bit, but I really am interested. Do you guys have a sample or a, a, a I guess I'd call it a sampling of a role play on how to do it correctly? Sure. Yeah, we do. Sure. Are we almost to the end here? Yeah, we're getting real close, so. Okay, well, I just want to point on just a couple little other points. Before yeah, please do. So the other thing that we want to keep in mind is another really huge point for me is that we don't want to look at issues as problems, but as opportunities. Ah. So that's another great, curious place to come from is what is my opportunity here to get to know my partner when they come to me with a need? And when we look at it as an opportunity instead of a problem, that really opens us up to be able to, to see that. And the other last point, which we're going to hit in in the role play, is always be open to what I call the third option, which means, you know, a lot of times when there's an issue, there's 
my side and there's your side. Okay. But what could that third option be? And so many people get really so stuck in, in holding their ground with what they want that they forget that there's maybe a win-win in there. And I'm not talking about compromise because in compromise, somebody always loses something. Yeah. I'm talking about the win-win where everybody gets a little bit of what they want. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the last role play. Okay. You'll be able to see how this works. It's a little longer, but you'll be able to see how this works. Okay. Much better. I'm real <laughs> curious, so go for it. <laughs> Um, I was just looking at uh, the money you spent for that Disney trip. Yeah. And You've got a lot of things planned. Yeah, I know. And I just don't see how we can afford it this year with the money we've been spending. Really? Um, yeah, I'm really worried about our finances. And you know, Disney is just so expensive. Wow. I didn't realize that things were so tight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been spending money like normal. You know, I just spent $300 on that pair of shoes. Right, right. You know, I really thought that we had money about uh, money for this. So tell me more about it. Tell me more about our finances and what's going on. Well, you know, I keep thinking about the bigger house that we've been talking about. And, you know, we both wanted it and trying to save for it. But if we keep going on those expensive vacations, we're never going to get there. Oh, Wow, I, 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 I know how important that is to you. You've been really talking about, you know, getting that bigger house that we can grow old in. You know, but vacations are really important to me too. My family grew up doing vacations and it, there's a, a lot of great memories with that. I'm gonna share that with our kids too. Um, I get that. And, you know, I've always dreamed of having a nice house that we could grow old in too. Big enough for the kids and their kids too. Yeah. And what you know, you well, you know, a Disney vacation would pretty much be a down payment on a house. Yeah, well, that's true. But one thing that uh, that I thought of, because you know, I understand that you know, the vacations are an important part of your life. Um, maybe we could find a house that we like somewhere that we like to vacation, buy a small vacation home somewhere, and then it's available to us whenever we want to go on vacation. You, you know, that might really work because, I mean, it's not a bigger house, but it's certainly a place where we could okay. grow, go and grow old and bring our kids and their kids and we could all have the really good memories and a great time there. Yeah. I think if we put our minds to it, we could figure something out. Wow. That's a whole new dream for us to share. Well. Okay. Wow. That was so calm. It was so calm and, and yeah, it was like, wow. It's right. the same conversation, but wow, it's so much different. Right. Yeah. And I know that for a lot of people looking at that, they're thinking maybe, yeah, yeah, right. That's not so easy to do. And we know that it's not so easy for a lot of people to do, that you've got to really work on all of these other attitudes to get there. Right. And that's why working with a relationship coach is really a great thing because we can help with those things. Yeah. We also have something that we, a, little, a great tool, and this is what we're going to put out there as our free gift to everybody. Oh, oh sweet. Yeah. It's called the communication map, and it's a very structured tool that tells you how to have these conversations. And then I've also put together, because you've always had, only got a few minutes with us here, I've also put together a five-part video series. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my God. How to use the communication map and how to get past a lot of these roadblocks and the things that, you know, put a halt to really good conversations. So I'm wow. putting that out to everybody who wants to, to get that from watching the, watching this summit. Wow. I knew you guys were generous, but wow, this is over the top. You know, <laughs> The thing like that, the thing like that, and most people would turn around and sell that for uh, like a hundred bucks. I, yeah. I'm, I'm so uh, impressed. Well, this this uh, endeavor isn't so much about making money as it is saving marriages, saving relationships. Yeah, you know that's one of the things that I did want to bring up today. You know, is your business? You know, most people that I'm interviewing have a business. You know, a for-profit business. I want the people to know about you guys. So tell them about your business, would you? Sure, well, uh, we created, um, we, like I said, it, for us it was much more about the, the people and not so much about the money. 
So we are about a year and a half ago, we formed a nonprofit organization and um, it's called Sailing Happily Ever After. And um, we just feel like it's really important to be able to help couples in more of a fun at, um, atmosphere. So we really try and make what we teach fun. Um, mm -hmm. We have sailing retreats that um, are part of the nonprofit organization for couples that are interested in improving their marriage in a really fun and bonding um, atmosphere and mm -hmm. for a great opportunity. Nice. You guys are so awesome. I am so glad that I invited you here. You know, I just want to thank the both of you, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart. It just, this was so wonderful. Well, good. So, I'm glad. Do you have any last minute comments you'd like to make to the people at home? Well, I just want to thank everybody for, for being here. Yeah. I know that if you're watching this summit, that a relationship is really important to you. And obviously relationships are really important to us. Um, we truly believe that good relationships are the foundation to a happy world um, and you know happy families so we really encourage everyone to you know get as much information as you can so that you can have that great relationship nice and you guys are a great example of a happily ever after i love it <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> well folks you've been hanging out with Kim and Bob Morris, and I am Roger House, your host. I so appreciate you being here on Healing Your Relationship Summit because we're here to help you find your happily ever after. And by the way, check your email uh, tomorrow because I got some great experts coming in, in again tomorrow, just as great as these guys here. So like I always end with, Live in love, peace, joy, and appreciation until the next time. Bye for now. Bye. -bye.